of fun driving that car. I bet. That slingshot. Yeah, one of your one of your bucket list things. Yeah. <laughs> well, one of my bucket list things is to own one of those. Hmm. Well, hmm. How would I tow it behind my trailer? Well, we've got that all figured out. Uh. We're going to build a trailer where it has a garage in the back, and, and we can just pull it right up in there. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that was a blast driving that, uh, that slingshot, and it was uh, uh, really nice to meet those folks. They were uh, uh, viewers of ours, and uh, they happened to be in the area. They were up at Eureka Springs, Arkansas, for a slingshot rally, and they contacted us and said, hey, we'd like to come by and visit with you and meet you and, and see the trailer. And we said, of course. So it's Kimmy Don and his wife Rose, and they're from the uh, uh, central part of Arkansas. We had a blast. Oh, we had a blast. Visited with them for quite some time. And then he got to, he let me drive the slingshot. Yeah, and she told me that he never lets anybody else ride driving. Yeah. So. And that was a blast. <laughs> it was it was a lot of fun uh, driving that slingshot. So thank you. Yeah, thank you, Kimmy Don and Rose. We really enjoyed our visit with you and uh, hope to see you again uh, soon again someday yeah 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 but uh anyway after that after well, that things kind of a few took days a later turn. yeah things took a turn for the worst as far as health concerns go right uh a few few months back we we did a video about we called it uh, diabetes scare and uh coe kicked us out if I remember correctly. Yes, that was back in uh, June, I believe. Yeah, and at the time I, I was uh, nursing a uh, wound on the bottom of my right foot. And this foot has been through all kinds of uh, heck since the year 2000. Put it mildly. To put it mildly. Uh, <laughs> my right foot, I was in a, a head-on collision back in the year 2000. I was a passenger in a 34 Ford street rod. And we had just backed out of our parking space on Main Street in Webb City, Missouri, I was uh, a performer at a uh, at a little show they had there. They had converted a, an old movie theater into a music show, and I was there for practice that night, for rehearsal that night. And the owner of the theater uh, was taking me for a ride in his 34 Ford Street Rod, and we had no sooner backed out of our parking spot and heading down the Main Street of Webb City, we weren't going but maybe 10, 15 miles an hour, and all of a sudden, uh, we heard a crash up ahead. We looked up ahead, and a uh, Dodge minivan had uh, careened into parked cars on the other side of the road, and then it turned and headed right for us and hit us head on. And she hit us going a little over 50 miles an hour. And when I saw the wreck getting ready to happen, I uttered a few colorful metaphors. You're right? good at that, right? Yeah. <laughs> Does that all the time. And covered, covered my face like that. And I pressed my feet hard to the floor. Well, the impact uh, caused me, and, and this is a 34 Ford Street Rod, and no, I was not wearing a seat belt, okay? <laughs> At that time, you know, it wasn't against the law not to wear a seat belt, but we did have seat belts in the car. So anyway, uh, I took out the dash of the car with my ribs, and... Uh, and when I pressed my feet hard to the floor, uh, my right foot snapped sideways as if you were to take a twig and hold it sideways and do that. And they had a heck of a time putting the foot back together, and they never could get it back together all the way. They always, the big toe always rode up like this, and which exposed this part right here uh, more so. And after we got that healed, and of course, from that point forward, my foot looked like an alien's foot because I never could make it go back right, you know. But from that point forward, you know, we're having that problem. We went to Las Vegas, uh, first time we'd ever been to Vegas, and I didn't realize how much walking we would be doing, and I took the wrong shoes. And I get back to the room one night, and uh, I took my shoes off, and I had a blister here about the size of a coffee cup, on the bottom of a coffee cup right there. And we nursed that along. I even went to a wound specialist, and that's why I don't care that much for wound specialists to this day. And I did everything the wound specialist told me to do, everything, but still, in the end, I ended up getting infected. And to make a long story short, I went into the emergency room uh, with my foot swelled up about the size of a football. And really, at that time, we thought we was going to lose it, didn't we? Yes. But no, we happened to get a really good orthopedic, orthopedic surgeon 
and everything else that I had done health wise was good which was in my favor so uh, he decided just to take the big toe and see how I'd fared after that well I healed up just fine and everything was fine well then I ended up with a sore on it you know a few months back and I was nursing it along myself and I had it clear down to where it was a little bitty sliver I mean just almost totally sealed I even commented to Deb one more week and it'll be healed but then we went to uh, we had this pretty spot on the uh, lake water. on the water and we did a video and uh, all the kids come out for the weekend everybody had their kayaks and I wasn't about to let everybody get in their boats and me not get in mine so I walked out into the water and probably in retrospect that was a bad decision that was a bad decision <laughs> So anyway, what happened later, uh, somehow some kind of bacteria got up in there and started, uh, my foot started swelling up in one particular spot. And uh, we tried to get, I tried to call the doctor. I was in a position where I couldn't get to him to see him. And I said, I'll be in town later this evening if you could at least call in some antibiotics until I can get in to see you. And he refused. Doctors don't give antibiotics yeah. just for the phone. Yeah, yeah. All, all on the mm -hmm. phone. He wouldn't give me any kind of antibiotic. So... By the time I finally got to... Uh, got, that was a Friday, by the way. That was a Friday. And then the following <laughs> Tuesday, it had really gotten bad. I wasn't able to see him. And that's another discussion about the people at the front desk. But we'll, yeah. we're will we not we're not going to go into that. Yeah. But people at the front desk sometimes think they have way too much power. You know, oh, no, the doctor can't see you today. He's too busy. Yeah. So anyway, we end up going to the emergency room. And... Uh, Sat there for hours and hours. Sat there for hours and hours. And by the time I got there, what had happened, this thing had swelled up, it had popped, and then it started turning black. Right. And we and I came prepared to be admitted to the hospital. Right? Logic. Yep, logically. I knew I was going to be admitted to the hospital. Nope. They uh, checked my white blood count, white blood cell count and said it was fine. The, my blood sugar was fine. It was only 101. I really, really work hard to take care of my blood sugar. Uh, no my, temperature. But no temperature. Well, temperature of 98. Yeah, they, the temperature of 98 in my normal. My normal is 97.6, right Point in there. Three. Point, okay, whatever. 93, <laughs> 97.3, 97.6. Ask the nurse. Yeah. <laughs> but they gave me some antibiotics and sent me home. And we asked, are you serious? And they said, well, according to their guidelines, we can't admit you over this. So I go home, and believe it or not, taking the antibiotics the next morning, man, it had improved by a huge margin. Yeah, in just a few hours. We were super encouraged. But then we get this call from the hospital saying, hey, we did take blood cultures that night, and we've gotten our first one back, and it says that you have bacteria in the blood. Are you feeling okay? And I said, I feel great. Everything's fine. I feel good. Uh, you ever run a temperature? No. And I check my temperature often when i got things like this going on. And they said, okay, well, uh, we're, we'll get the other one back here probably by tomorrow. And if you don't hear back from us, everything's okay. Because sometimes one can be bad and the other one can be good. And I said, okay. So the next day I got up, I was feeling good, everything. My blood sugar was great. Everything was great. And lo and behold, that afternoon, though, they gave me a call. And this is on a Thursday. Now we're up to Thursday. Now we're to Thursday. They said, okay, well, the second one came back bad, so you have got to see... Your primary care doctor. Your primary care doctor. Okay. That's another discussion again. I call to see my primary care doctor. Well, your primary care doctor today is out sick. Well, here's the deal. He's uh, in a clinic with other doctors. <laughs> yeah, and here's the deal then. We have gotten a call. We've had two bad cultures, uh, and we need to see somebody so we'll know how to proceed from here, and they said to do here. Go here. Can one of the other doctors in the clinic see me? Oh, no, they're all too busy. And I got a little irate, and I said, what type, of, what does the word staff, what, why does that not mean anything to you? I mean, I understand you're just the receptionist, but we're dealing with a staph infection here. Yeah. And she says, I'll send back a priority message to the other doctors, and one of the other doctors can get back with you. And all they ended up doing, they ended up, we did get a call from an orthopedic surgeon later that e well, afternoon. Well, that's because I had also asked for a referral to an orthopedic because right. I knew we would need one. Yeah, because like, I'd used this I mean, come on, I've before. had this happen before. Right. <laughs> so we do get a call from the orthopedic surgeon at 5 o'clock that day. 
Well, the orthopedic surgeon, here again, evidently no one has really stressed the urgency of this because the uh, person at the front desk says that the orthopedic surgeon can't see me till October the 11th. Okay. <laughs> All righty. So, uh, the next morning, uh, Friday, now we're to Friday, I call back into the office, and I'm a little more stern this time, and I asked if my doctor was back from being sick, and yes, he is, and I explained the situation again. I said, here's the deal. I have got to see somebody. And they said, well, we will talk to your doctor. No, they said we're too busy today to see you. Yeah, first they said that. Then they said, finally, after I talked some more, they said, well, we will talk to your doctor. Maybe he can work you in. So then I do get a call back in a little while, and they said, your doctor, we just talked to your doctor, and he said he will work you in. Uh, come in around 2, two o'clock. So Friday, I thought, well, I'm going to come in around 2 o'clock. He's probably going to draw more blood, do another culture, and then we're going to go from there. Well, when I get into the doctor's office, this time I'm not prepared to be admitted to the hospital. No, he drove himself in. Yeah, I drove myself in. I stayed out at the camp. Right. right. Uh, I get, I go in there to see him. He said, well, the hospital sent me everything over. I've been looking at everything. He said, uh, and he explained to me how serious this is, and we need to start uh, uh, treating this like, aggressively. We didn't know this. <laughs> yeah. So I've already talked to the hospital, and they're waiting for you. So. And so there you are. There you are. Yeah. Uh, so that's, uh, I guess uh, we need to say welcome to Medicare. Is that the way that works? Well, it's not supposed to be. Not supposed to be, but anyway. Uh, but got me into the hospital. Uh, they ended up uh, and, and, and they ended up doing a debridement of the wound. A lot of you probably know what that is. And basically what they do is they go in and cut out the bad stuff. All now, the dead tissue. All the dead tissue. Which by that time, the tissue was looking a whole lot more healthy because I was still on this other antibiotic and it was looking better. It was still progressing in a positive manner all this time. But what they were mostly concerned about now was uh, how this might affect my heart and things like because this. Because this particular type of bacteria in the bloodstream can attach itself to the heart valves. Right. And so they automatically moved him straight from, after coming out and telling me the wound looked great, we've cleaned it up, blah, 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 he'll be back in his room in a little bit. And the next thing I know, they're saying we've moved him to cardiac, to the cardiac floor. Boom, boom, boom. And there we go. And yep. uh, so then now they have him hooked up to all kinds of heart monitors and seeing a cardiac doctor. And <laughs> anyway, everything in the end, you know, we, we could go into a longer discussion. Yeah, we're just telling you why we haven't been here. We're just telling you why we haven't been here. And but in the end, uh, everything has worked out. Uh, I am back home and uh, they have me on, uh, I do have a pick line. Yeah, got a pick line right there. A lot of you know what that is. So I do have to take intravenous antibiotics uh, once a day. Uh, they have a home health nurse come out, and fortunately the home health nurse, uh, our insurance pays that 100%. It's zero copay to us, so that, that's awesome. <laughs> uh, uh, and they also have me on uh, for my wound, which is something new. Well, and, new to us anyway. Yeah, new to us anyway. It's called a wound vac, and some of you know what that is. But basically what it does, they put this uh, deal around the wound where it literally sucks down. It's kind of similar to uh, the, those, shrink, those wrap things. shrink wrap things, you know, <laughs> you can you can shrink your clothes into, you know, and things like that. Well, that's what it does, and the theory behind it is it draws out what, uh, what bacteria could still be in the wound, and it also... Uh, helps uh, draw more blood down in uh, through the capillaries down in that area to uh, to because enhance the healing process. Because it won't heal without blood supply. Right. However, every single person that checked the pulse in my foot said that I had excellent blood flow in my foot. So there you go. There we are. Anyway, I'm home. Uh, everything is fine. I'm on the mend. Uh, we're going to be okay. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we are. Yeah. Someone's trying to call you, Deb. Yeah. Anyway, I'm back home. Everything is fine, Hello. and uh, and we're going to move on. That's all there is to it. I, I, you know, I'll be back on top of things before too long. But we just thought we'd let you know right quick and let you know what was going on. Well, uh, and that's where we're at. Everything is progressing fine. Ain't going to be no problems. No. From now on. No. No. It's going to heal fine. Um, there wasn't that much bad tissue. The orthopedic surgeon, when he went in there, he told me. He said when he dug into it. He didn't find half as much as what he expected. He was very uh, uh, pleased and surprised. 
Yeah. At same and I time. think one of the things we want to really stress is we are still into this lifestyle of yep. living full time in our conversion. Um, thank goodness that we did make the decision in August to go ahead and discuss winter camping because this gives Bill all winter to heal. Yep. Um, so I'm a firm believer that things happen for a reason. Yeah. And so we are still the camp, the rangers out here are more than kind. They've been telling us, you know, just take your time, do what you got to do, take care of Bill. I'm more inclined to take care of Bill and do my job. Which and we do. <laughs> Which she, I'm doing. <laughs> she would spend the night with me in the hospital, and then she'd drive out here uh, during the day to make her rounds and do the things that she needed to do, and then come back with me. You got to do what so you got to do. It all worked out. Everything is working fine. We don't want anybody to be concerned or anything. We're doing fine. And we also want to stress uh, we're not going to harp on this from this point forward. No, you know, no, no. We got other things to do. Yeah, we got to think we're not going to turn this into a, a, a channel about drama. No. And, and, <laughs> And, and we want to stress that and make sure everybody understands that. We will give you an update from time to time, let you know how things are going. He's got to heal uh, pretty quick because he's got a lot of... Um, yeah, I've still got a bunch of stuff i got to yeah. do on this thing back here. You know, we've already covered that in some of our other videos. <laughs> so, anyway, that, that's that's the main thing there. The, the, this is this channel is not going to be around about drama, okay? No. And we just want to make sure that everybody understands that. And, uh, anyway, I guess... Uh, We've got a lot more important things to talk about, you know, in the future, of course, with our with our videos in the channel, and we and uh, where we're at. Yeah. As soon as Bill gets to feel a little bit better, he's feeling pretty good. We're going to do another live from yeah. where we're at. Yeah, we have Wi-Fi now in the trailer. Yeah, excellent Wi-Fi. So yeah. we are going to be going live again with music in sure. the near future. Yeah. And we'll yeah. announce that. Um, other than that, what else have we got to say? I feel great. He I feels really great. Do. I'm not. I'm not making this up. I feel great. <laughs> right. Well. Yeah. The blood sugar tells me he feels great. Blood pressure tells me he feels great. His temperature tells me he feels great. Yeah. And he's getting mouthy again, so he's feeling pretty good. And um. Little, now watch it. A little frisky too. This isn't too. a. This is not. <laughs> anyway. She doesn't like the friskiness. That's <laughs> the way. So, I'm anyway. <laughs> anyway. All right. Now, we are not camping. Yeah. I'm not done yeah. yet. Okay. I will say this. If you would like to support the channel, we did set up, you know, with this buy Deb a cup of coffee thing. So, <laughs> if you would like to support the channel, and this is all we're ever going to do with that is just this little thing here. And, and there will be a link uh, in the description of the video and also uh, in the comment section. And it's real easy to do that if you'd like to buy Deb a couple of a couple a, a cup. cup of coffee, no big deal, you know. But we're just putting that out there if you would like to support the channel. Uh, that's what, how you can do that, and we really appreciate it. Our channel is still steadily growing. Uh, we still get new subscribers every day, and we are so excited about that. And so, and it's so heartwarming, you know. And uh, we always get a ton of positive comments. And we appreciate that more than anything else. And then the people that want to come by and visit with us. And we've had so many nice visits with people that's come by just to meet us and see us. And and we really appreciate all that. And it's just been it's been awesome. Absolutely. It has. It has been so totally anyway, awesome. If you'd like to support the channel, buy Deb a cup of coffee. <laughs> it's real easy to do. And uh, and she needs coffee. Now she may substitute that for wine, right? Yes. <laughs> or or a nip of Fireball. Or Fireball. Right. Yeah. Right now, I'm not drinking. I'm drinking coffee, but I'm not drinking any alcohol no. whatsoever until this. Kind of interferes with the antibiotics. Kind of <laughs> interferes with everything else that's going on. So but I anyway, get it all. <laughs> we'll say it now. Folks, this is Bill and Deb with I Ride Tiny House Adventures, and we have one thing to say. We're not camping. We're living. We're living. Bye. Bye. <laughs> As we sit side by side under the beautiful sky And reflect on this life we have chosen There's so much we've discovered through our love for each other With no worries about where we'll be going 
Then I look in your eyes and with no great surprise I see joy in this life we've been given With my mind all so clear I whisper softly in your ear We're not camping We're living We're not camping We're not camping, we're living.